Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be reading this book called The Little Mermaid. But before we get started, remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell button to get notifications. And comment down below if you like this book. Deep under the sea, more folks and more creatures hurry to King Trident's glittering palace. Ariel, his youngest daughter, was making a musical debut in a special concert and no one wanted to miss it. King Trident arrived as everyone gathered in the great hall. With the tap of his baton substant, the, the court composer instructed the orchestra to begin. But when it was time to instruct Ariel, she wasn't there. Ariel had forgotten about the concert. She was miles away, searching for human treasures in a sunken ship. Her friend Flounder followed her nervously around the ship. You, have you ever seen anything so wonderful in your entire life? Ariel asked her friend, picking up a silver fork. Yeah, it's great, Flounder muttered. Now let's get out of here. Suddenly, a huge, a huge mouth of teeth appeared behind them. A shark! Swim! Flounder shouted. The two friends swam for their lives as the shark charged after them. As the shark leaped towards to take a big bite, it got st stuck tight in an old anchor. Take that, you big bully! Flounder taunted. Ariel and Fra Flounder swam to the surface to find Scuttle, a seagull who claimed to know all about the human world. Scuttle exclaimed, The fork. This is a dingle hopper, he said. Humans use these to comb their hair. Just then, just then, Ariel remembered the concert. My father is going to kill me, she gasped. In a cave, a sea witch called Ursula used her magic to watch Ariel hurry home. She laughed to herself as she thought of her plan to use Ariel to get back at King Triton. When King Triton learned that Ariel missed the concert because she had been to the surface, he was furious. He believed humans were dangerous and he wanted to protect her. You are never to go to the surface again, he commanded. After Ariel left, King Trident asked Substance to keep an eye on her. Substance followed, followed Ariel to a secret grotto. When he peeped inside, it, he was stunned to see that it was filled with human treasures. The little crab was shocked to overhear Ariel tell Flounder how much she wanted to be a part of the human world. Substance tried to talk some sense into Ariel, but... She didn't want to listen. Before he could stop her, Ariel swam to the surface again to watch a large ship sail past. Peeping through a hole in the side of the ship, Ariel saw Prince Eric. He was smiling at his guardian, Sir Grimsby, unveiling a statue of him. Ariel couldn't stop gazing at Eric. Scuttle saw Ariel as he flew past and joined her as she spied on Eric. He's very handsome, isn't he? asked Scuttle. She asked Scuttle. Suddenly, thunder roared and lightning cracked as a storm hit. A lightning bolt struck the ship and set it on fire. As the fire burned, the ship was rocked by huge waves. Ariel watched in horror horror as Eric was thrown overboard and swept into the sea. Beneath the waves, Ariel grabbed the unconscious prince struggling to keep hold of him. She pulled him to the safety of the shore. While Scuttle listened for a heartbeat, Ariel sang to him in a clear, beautiful voice, but when she heard people approaching, she quickly dived back into the sea. As Eric woke up, he only caught a glimpse of her face, but he knew he would never be able to forget her voice. Ariel was in love, and all she could do was think about Eric. Her father noticed her strange behavior, and 
asked Substant to take him to Ariel. At the entrance of the grotto, King Trident watched his love-struck daughter sing. Sang about a human furious. Trident burst in contact between the human world and the mer world is forbidden. But Daddy, I love him, announced Ariel. If this is the only way to get through to you, then so be it, Trident shouted as he raised his trident. Flashes of light filled the room. And the statue of Eric and the rest of Ariel's treasures were destroyed. Upset with her father, Ariel went to see Ursula's cave. The sea which offered to turn Ariel into a human if she could keep Ariel's worth. The deal also meant Eric had to kiss her before sunset on the third day. If not, I'll turn you back into a mermaid and you will belong to me. Ursula crackled. Frightened but determined, Ariel signed the contract. Now sing! Ursula commanded. Ariel's voice flowed from her and, and Ursula captured it in a seashell. Suddenly, Ariel began to transform. Her tail disappeared. In its place, she had legs. Flounder and Substant helped Ariel to the surface. When she looked at her new legs, delighted, Substant was worried about Ariel and agreed to help her along with her friends in the human world. Just as Ariel's friends helped her to shore and dressed her in an old rag, the, pr the prince and his dog appeared and spotted her. You look familiar, Eric told Ariel. Was she the girl who sang to him? But when Eric realized that Ariel couldn't talk, he decided she couldn't be the girl he was looking for. Eric took Ariel back to his palace, where she was dressed in a beautiful ball gown and invited to dinner. The prin to the prince's surprise, Ariel combed her hair with a fork, just as Scuttle had taught her. Substant hid himself at the dinner table so that he could keep an eye on Ariel. The next day, Eric took Ariel on a tour of his kingdom. Despite the fun they had, Eric still had not kissed her and there was only one day left. At sunset, the prince took Ariel rowing on a lagoon. Substant, with the help of the others, sang a song about love. Eric gazed at Ariel, but just as they were about to to kiss, the boat was tipped over by eels that had been sent by Ursula. Ursula used her magic to watch from her cave. That was too close, she said to herself. It's time I took matter into my own hands. Ursula then transformed herself into a beautiful young woman named Vanessa. She wore a necklace with the shell that contained Ariel's voice. When Ariel woke up the next day, she rushed downstairs to see Eric announce his marriage to Vanessa. Ariel was heartbroken. She had lost her true love and now she would never escape Ursula's clutches. The wedding ship departs at sunset, Eric told Grimsby. Once aboard the ship, Ursula gloated as she managed to trick the prince using Ariel's beautiful singing voice and had put him under a spell. Soon Ursula would rule the sea. Ursula didn't notice that Scuttle had been had seen her talking about her plan through a porthole. He saw her true reflection in the mirror. Scuttle flew back to tell Ariel that the girl the prince was marrying was really Ursula the sea witch in disguise. 
They had to stop the wedding. Ariel and her friends hurried to the ship, but the sun was already going down. They had to move fast. The wedding had already started when Ariel and her friends arrived at the ship. Eric stood in a trance before the minister. Vanessa smiled to herself as they got closer to being married. She was sure that her plan was going to work. Ariel would be hers forever. But just before Vanessa could say her vows, all the animals that Ariel's friends had rounded up came to the rescue. Scuttle managed to yank the necklace from Vanessa's neck and smash it on the floor. Ariel's voice flowed back to her and Eric was released from the spell. You're the one, he exclaimed as Eric heard Ariel's voice. You're too late, laughed Ursula. The sun has had set beneath the horizon and Ariel became a mermaid again. Ursula changed back into her real form as the sea witch had dragged Ariel into the sea. I'm not going to lose her again, shouted Eric as he went after Ariel. Beneath the sea, King Trident appeared. Ursula, let her go. She's mine now, Ursula replied, showing him Ariel's contract. We made a deal, but I might be willing to make an exchange to save his beloved daughter. King Trident agreed to take Ariel's place. Now he would be Ursula's prisoner, servant forever. Ursula took the king's trident and stirred the waves, creating a huge whirlpool. Now I am the ruler of all the ocean, she declared as Ariel and Eric watched in horror. Ursula grew and grew and grew until she towered over the sea. Eric saw an ancient sunken ship rising through the whirlpool and decided to climb aboard just as Ariel took aim at him with, his, with her fiery trident. He steered and jagged Bo through the sea witch's heart. The sea witch disappeared beneath the waves. Her spell was broken. The, the king, king trident and all the poor of unfortunate souls Ursula had tricked were free at last. But Ariel was a mermaid and Eric would always be a human. King trident watched his daughter gaze longing at her true love on the shore. With a sigh, he touched his trident to the water and Ariel turned back into a human. The king smiled tenderly as he watched Ariel walk out of the sea to be with the one, she, one true love. Some time later, Ariel's friends and family gathered to watch Ariel and Prince Eric get married. At last, she was part of the human world she loved and would live there happily ever after. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Bye!